Well, now joining us to have this conversation is John Paul Akinduro, Special Assistant on Media to the former Governor of Ondo State, Olushego Mimiko. Thank you so much, John Paul, for joining us. Thank you, Blessing. Glad to be here. My pleasure. Now, um, John Paul, what would you say are the implications of uh, Ayodatiwa becoming the governor? Would you say that he will have the political support that he needs? Well, thank you. First, let me commiserate with the good people of Ondo State over the demise of our governor, who has served for about seven years as a governor of Ondo State, Arakumi Rotimiya Kirudulu. SAN, uh, it's a great, great, I mean, it's a big loss, and um, I think the states, uh, the people generally are still mourning. Uh, it's, uh, as you have said, and uh, we have all witnessed, the new governor, the deputy governor, acting governor, now governor, uh, has been sworn in. And um, it should be too early in the day to say uh, if he's going to enjoy the political support or not, because as you know, we are gearing up to the 2024 uh, governorship election in the states. And there are very multiple interests around here from within and outside the APC. So why, it might be too early to say that the party or the party apparatchik will throw their weight behind him. Right. Um, now, we do understand that, I mean, for every administration, there are always inherited, uh, inherited uh, issues, be, be financial, economic, or, or whatnot. Uh, there are certain challenges in Ondo State currently that we understand that the state is facing. What are these challenges, and in what way would Aedatiwa's leadership impact these challenges? Huge, enormous, very big, that, that, and there's really a big gap over the last few months in the States, uh, we've had zero governance. As uh, you all can, you know, are witnesses to it, we've had zero governance. On those states that, you know, we've moved from a place of pride. So we've gone back to a province. We're no longer the on those state people used to know. We were on those states where healthcare was taken for granted. We were on those states where education was top-notch. We were on those states where infrastructure was second to none where, you know, on those states, a shiny example, one of the most, you know, one of the cleanest states in the, the whole of Nigeria at the point. But we moved from, you know, those laurels. We moved, we dropped those accolades. We now went back to ground zero. There was no governance. There was nothing for quite, for more than a year. So all we had was politics, was personal interest here and there. But the challenge is the task ahead of the new governor will be first to create, to instill confidence in the people of Ondo State that governance and governor and the governor can still do better. That, it, that, that, that is to bridge that gap between government and the government. That's the first one. The second one is also to, uh, to, to, to recreate, to instill that confidence again in our investors. People before now were coming to Ondo State you know, to buy properties, to run businesses, to do a whole lot. But when you have that gap, when there's a gap, those things are almost impossible. You can imagine as you speak right now, there hasn't been, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, any official uh, uh, declaration from the state government that the, government, the governor is dead. No. So where the governor should also step in is that all those social amenities, uh, social amenities that we have been lacking over time, everything that has been missing over time, it should you know, go back to the drawing board, call people like minds together, and you know, develop a master plan, a roadmap. We have, he has about one year in office. I wouldn't know if he's running for uh, uh, for governorship, coming election. He hasn't declared yet. But he has about four. Well, he has about one a year in office. He leaves by February 2024 if he's not running a girl, if he's not reelected. So the governor still has that chance, you know, to bring everyone back together, to unite the people of Ondo State, APC, PDP, SDP, ZLP, whatever political party you belong to, whatever, you know, ethnic group, whatever tribe, whatever you belong to, so long as you reside in Ondo State, you work here, you live here, it is your, it is, it is, it is, it is it, you need to enjoy every good thing that is coming to Ondo State. So we need to move on. We need to move on. We need to leave politics aside. We need to quickly move on to governance. We need to quickly talk about staff, you know, um, uh, civil servants' welfare. We need to talk about uh, business people, 
businesses are grounded right around here. You need to talk about that. You need to talk about education. You need to declare state of emergency in, in the healthcare sector. We have a big problem, if, anyone, if no one is talking about it. We have a big, a very big problem. Infrastructure, we're not there. You know, manpower, we're not there. Uh, incentivization, we're not there. We're not there in the, in the, in the air sector. So, likewise, in some other sectors. So, it needs to go back. It needs to quickly speed it up and get those things working. All right. Uh, John Paul, you might not know this, but about five, six hours ago, the Ondo State Government did make an official declaration that um, Akiridolu has died of prostate cancer. Why do you think otherwise? Sorry, take that again. I'm just asking why you think there's not been a, an official statement to Akiridolu's death. Oh, maybe I haven't seen it. You guys have seen it. Yeah, okay. So just to clarify that there has been. Well, I haven't seen it. All right, great. Now, um, talking about um, uh, the future of Ondo State, um, what do you think this means for the state? You did talk about um, um, the, the new regime and what to expect. Do you think that it's headed in a positive or in a negative direction? Well, uh, we leave uh, we need time to uh, really show us the stuff is made up. Um, the new governor is experienced. Uh, he's been deputy governor now for about two years, since uh, 2019, I guess. So uh, he has that experience. Uh, he knows where the shoe pinches. He knows he should know the right thing to do. And I'm sure he must have learned uh, from the mistakes of the uh, of, of the past governor, uh, Miguel Reci. So, so well, um, if, he, if he's able to consult and bring the best brains together, I think, in my own opinion, that the new governor might, you know, do wonders. Okay. Um, now, I remember when this whole um, dispute started about people complaining that they do not want leadership by proxy, that they did appoint Akiri Dolo and they want to see him, um, you know, in power. And so because of that, they were kind of against uh, Aida Tewa's role. But with all of this, do you think this will put that debate to rest? And at least Aida Tewa will get the support. Yeah, from the masses, yes. You know, political class, you can't even, you know, speak for them. But for, from the masses, yes. Because for far too long, we've been the ones suffering for all these, you know, political impasses. It, it, it's been the masses. The school free school shuttle were not working. I, just like I said, the healthcare sector was in comatose because some people felt that their personal interest is above the general interest. That their personal interest was above, I mean, was much more important than the interest of the collective interest of the masses. So it, 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 it's, um, it's, um, it's all those things that, were saying, that they were saying before that uh, the governor, or now the governor, uh, they, that they didn't want to hand over to the governor because I think that he was the one elected and blah, blah, blah. Those, those, those things didn't even hold any water. You know, constitutionally, we've, we, we, we have not done, we did not do what we ought to have done earlier. You know, you know, it will be since Akedolu started going for medical leave. He went on medical leave. He spent, he overspent his um, days at the, uh, in the hospital. And nothing was done. You know, the people were quiet. The state assembly was also a place of kind of funny games. You know, you saw the cabal and they held on to power. They didn't want to leave. Not because they were, not, not because they liked us. Not because they, 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 they wanted on those state to flourish. No, but because they wanted to hold on to power because of their own selfish and personal interests. So we are happy. I'm speaking. I'm not speaking as a special assistant to the governor, to the former governor. I'm speaking as a concerned citizen. I'm speaking as someone who is here, who lives here too, who has a family here, and who wants the state to flourish, who wants the state to thrive. So for me, it doesn't matter the kind of person I that who I is. What is important to me is that the very good thing has been done. All those states was in the bad light in the last one year. We cannot afford to move on in that direction. So now it's inevitable. Death has come. No one can hold that. So we pray that the Lord, the Lord will forgive him all his sins and grant him eternal rest. But now we need to move on. The governor has gone to rest. Now there's a new governor. We need to move on from there. And my advice, or I will enjoy all the actors, all the political players in the state for a few moments, you know, to just chill and relax and support this governor. Let us put the state together. Let's, let's put the interest of the masses first, now before political interest. 
All right. Uh, you did mention that um, Ondo State is currently in a bad light. And um, looking at how Aedatiwa's um, reign is, is going to be quite gnarly, to be honest, because he has his work cut out for him and there'll be a lot of expectations on him. So in your own opinion, what will be um, some of the reforms that you would suggest for Aedatiwa's um, administration? Well, um, everyone here knows that the first thing is that he needs to dissolve the state executive members. He knows that's the first thing to do. The first thing to do, the second thing to do, is for him to say the masses must be put, you know, the interest of the masses must be put first at all times. And in doing that, in doing that, you've got to go back to the basic things that we've been lacking over time. healthcare, you know, education, infrastructure, security, and go back to those things. Now, you need to work hand in hand with the, with the state assembly to bring about pro-people, pro-poor policies. You need to work with a new team, a new team of, you know, great thinkers. You know, bring them on board your team and, you know, initiate and create design pro-poor, pro-masses policies projects and programs, you know, for the people to continue to enjoy. I mean, after, by the time you do that, there's no rocket science. By the time you do that, you, you see that the state continue to move faster. You think, you see that things will move in a direction that, that will be awesome, you know, it, um, it will be unbelievable. And if you don't do that, the reverse will be the case. It's, it's just as simple as that. that. There are no two ways about it. Right. Uh, John Paul Akinduro, Special Assistant on Media to the former governor of Ondo State, Olusego Mimiko. We really appreciate your time with us and for sharing your thought as well on this re recent development. And we look forward to seeing a better Ondo State altogether. Thank you. Thank you.